In a modern age where young people are vocal about sexual expression, the question remains, how relevant is the voice of the church to this generation? Sarah Tabo, author of Sex Interrupted, reflects on how she came to take a stand about the purpose of sex. Well, I felt the need to write the book Sex Interrupted because our young people are living in an age where there's a lot of information going around on the topic of sex, but not a lot of information is originating from the church, who should be the authority on the subject of sex. Um, when I was younger and I started dating my husband, I found that um, I wasn't invincible anymore. I had feelings that were starting to overtake me and I was beginning to question, am I still a Christian? Is it natural to feel this way? Why are these emotions, you know, trying to take over me? You know, I speak in tongues, I sing in the choir. So why do I feel like touching him? Why do I want him to touch me? And um, I started looking for information, trying to educate myself to understand where to draw the line, to understand how to handle temptation. And I couldn't find much material that was practical. You know, there's lots of scripture going on, but not really practical solutions. So I started doing research and just studying the word and basically reading materials. And I ended up writing a book, which was useful for me while I was single. And then I find now that it's very useful for lots of young people and single adults as well. There's so many things I could actually share. But I think the first few ones are that, you know, understand it's the reality. You would have those feelings. Two, resolve not to, you know, have sex before marriage. And three, begin to take action to bring that plan to reality. Because if you just say, I'm not going to have sex before marriage, and you don't do anything to help yourself, then you're not going to make much progress. The lie of the devil is, you know, God doesn't want you to have sex. I mean, when he comes to young people, like, that's why he's making your life so difficult. God doesn't want you to have sex. He doesn't want you to have a, enjoy your life and have fun. No, God actually wants you to have sex. When God was thinking about how does a man express his untold affections to a woman, when God was thinking, how does a woman become enthralled, get into a place of ecstasy? How do people who are in love express their untold emotions for each other? How do people reach a peak? of ecstasy. God thought about these things and he said, let there be sex. So God actually created sex for a purpose, for man and woman to have pleasure with each other. He created it such that it will be enjoyed in an institution called marriage. And it is a mirror of worship. It's one of the things I wrote in my book. It kind of shows you how you can be intimate with a person and it's a reflection of how you'd be intimate with God. Sex was created by God because he wanted a man and a woman to enjoy their time together in a place of marriage. It's a very, very divine thing and we should treat it as such. I'm standing here in Jubilee Church, RCCG Manchester, a church who believes in loving God, loving people, and influencing society. This church is a church whose pastors believe in teaching its members the biblical truths about sex. When we came over to Manchester in 2002, we found out that a lot of young people, they were living together, they weren't married, and it was like the norm of the society. Nobody really saw what is bad in that. And, um, but to the glory of God, I make bold to say that we've seen a lot of changes, tremendous changes in the lives of our youth. During a youth conference that night, it was evident that the work done by Jubilee Church to teach young people about sex was bringing about positive change. I think the greatest blessing that has happened today is that the church has spoken about it and that young people were able to voice what their opinions or what their fears or what their what has been happening in their mind. So it was their chance to talk, release it, and let them know that the church is not scared to talk about it. So that when they now hear it in the world, they can know, oh, well, my church talks about this anyway. So it's not a taboo, it's a common topic. Sex should be talked about more in churches. Otherwise, uh, we're gonna have more problems. Uh, someone said, if, you, if you've not taught them, don't blame them. So we should teach people more about sex in churches. In our church here in Manchester, we are really doing it and we want to do more uh, because uh, what we've done has brought us a lot of results and we want to do more. And uh, it is also biblical. 
It is, it is part of the Bible. Premarital sex is not the will of God. Extramarital sex is not the will of God. And sex within marriage is the will of God. Sex within marriage <laughs> is the will of God. It brings intimacy. It brings harmony. It brings love. It brings unity. And um, it brings closeness, more closeness in, in the marriage. People are hungry to, to, to know the right thing. Not, not even only in the area of sex, in, in, in all areas of life. And sex, sex, sex happens to be one of them. People are hungry to know the right thing. And if they find a church of integrity, if they find a church that has a leader of integrity, where, I mean, who talks about all this, they, they go there. And, that, that, and to the glory of God and by His grace, that's what we've had in our church.